That, my friends, is a cheap DC to AC inverter I bought about 10 years ago. And it was supposed to be something that would sit in your, your coffee cup holder and it has. And I've used it now for a long time. I just never really put a lot of weight on it. And it just finished charging up a battery for one of those Harbor Freight come to the rescue tools. They have their own internal brands like you all know. And I have to get something to get these lug nuts off. And in one of those, I don't know if you want to call them brain farts, but one of those fits of, I had to get something. And I ended up getting this thing right here. 20 volt lithium powered impact driver, rated at 450 foot pounds. And I was like, was that gonna pull those off or not? I don't know. So let's find out. The answer is yes. All right. What I'm gonna do, once I get this tire off of here, because it's flat, is I'm going to anti-seize the heck out of those, those studs. This thing here performed perfectly. I think while I'm at it, I'm going to set this camera on the tire and I'm going to rattle those off right there so you can see it. And the question I had was this one and a half amp hour battery enough battery because you can get a three amp hour battery too with the same thing. I gotta make sure these damn things aren't rusted to the point where they're cracked. Boy, I probably have to replace these rims too at some point. But it's not about the trailer, it's about this. And this is a very, very handy tool for roadside assistance and roadside repair. So it's gonna be a regular traveling partner of mine, I think. Well, I find myself in an interesting position here. It's mid-May. Yes, mid-May. This morning it was 20 degrees out and we had a wind that was in the 30 mile an hour range beating on the place. Now I'm on the eastern side of the hill so you don't see the wind right now but there's still a pretty good breeze up at the house. Well the interesting position is I don't have any firewood up there. Think about that for a second. And what I do have is a bunch of ash. You see me work on that a little bit with the project saws. So I need to come down here and get some good hardwood that's been seasoned so that I can use that in the, in the fireplace for tonight. So I'm gonna block up a little bit of this. Like I said, kind of an odd situation for me. You know, usually I've got enough firewood to get through at least till May. Oh, wait a second, it is May is I got a couple of the play saws in the back of the truck. This, this provides an opportunity for video, I guess. And I think the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna pull them out and see which ones have fuel and give each one a chance. And the first one that fires up is the one I'm gonna to use to block this up with. How's that? Well, the first one that I came to is this one right here. 
and it's been sitting in the truck now for a couple of days to see if it'll fire. I don't know how much fuel it's got in there, I didn't check.
one thing I can tell you for a fact is this little steel has really picked up compression. <laughs> And because of that, it has become both more powerful than it was, but also easier to live with. It doesn't vibrate very much at all. I call these the hockey puck saws because of those rubber donuts they have for 85. This is not a bad saw to run. Wow, that's hard. Think about it for a little bit from where we started with that saw without doing anything but tightening those cylinder screws at the point now where I actually have to lean it out. Alright, now it's been sitting. <laughs> effort to get them restarted. I guess now I gotta pick this stuff up and put it in the truck and bring it to the house so I can burn it tonight. Putting together some saws for tomorrow. Bob's gonna come up, so I figure I better put together a couple of saws that'll be of some interest, right? About that for a second. The last time this saw was run was on a video. I'm not sure where that's rubbing. I probably ought to find out, huh? Alright, so I have to get this saw ready for tomorrow. And let me see if it'll restart. I had it running before. And uh, let's just make sure it runs. Okay, this is that 254 that I had built out of a pile of junk, I don't know, a couple years back now. And uh, it's a good running saw, nothing wrong with it. I tried to put this bar on it, 
and it was binding up the chain because the tail is a little bit too narrow from here to here. So when you put the cover on, it would squeeze the chain into the guide plates. So I can't use that bar. Um, I have a speed cut bar and chain that I had put on my 42, which is really a 242. So it's going to get the nod this time, I'm afraid. One thing is you get to appreciate the new saws with the internal clutch, external sprocket after you deal with these guys for a little while because it's, it's a lot harder to, to get the bar and chain on these. Change that out, out as compared to the, the newer ones that Steel and Husqvarna have done over the years. It's not fair because I already had this on and adjusted it, but I had to reshoot the section of the video. That's why it's so much easier. Uh, Alright, let me see if it uh, works now. I think it will. This will be the first one. This is for tomorrow. I have another one. This is a John's Red 920 and should run. saws for tomorrow. It's probably enough. I don't think I'm going to go crazy. Not bringing the steel. Bob won't appreciate the steel. This is that saw I also was running at the beginning of the video. And it's got a lot of time if you hadn't noticed. Probably could use a good sharpening at this point. I may just put a new chain on just to get it done. But what this is, is that junk pile build I did with a OEM original edition 48 millimeter 365 cylinder, right? No base gasket build. Chinese cases and the better Chinese handle. I'm going to change this out at some point in time because this, this build deserves to be on a, a complete OEM uh, set of cases and handle. It really does. It's one of the better running saws that I have right now. Just an awesome saw. Fun to run. Good power, easy to start, very easy to restart, does not stall. It's been proven reliable to this point in time. It's got plenty of power. It's just a great saw to run. And I have to admit the Chinese cases have not failed me because um, on similar builds I've had PTO bearing pocket failures, but not on this saw to this point in time. As we get into 2020, midsummer or so, this will have a full year of service on it, and that'll be kind of telling. So, great song. Yeah, see if there was any bearing failure of any kind, the seal goes first, or it sucks alongside the bearing, uh, that would have shut the saw off and it did not, so it continues. Okay, moving on. I got my two saws for tomorrow. This most likely will be my backup saw. And ran it a little earlier today. Now the other saw, that I started the video with is 
want to kind of make this a wrap on that saw in the configuration that it's in right now. And that's the steel MS310. It's going to get a different cylinder and piston at some point. Now, it's basically running well enough right now that a person can use that to cut firewood and have no real issue. The way it came to me was the bottom half of the crankcase cap that goes right here that holds the crankshaft and the bearings in had worked its way loose so it was sucking air really bad and all I had done is tighten up the cylinder screws and now you see how it's running as a result and it doesn't seem to have any air leak issues it runs pretty good you know I think that's pretty impressive starting from where it did with that big air leak and potentially issues with gaskets and things to where it is now Actually, it's running a little fat. I have to start leading it out. And that's quite a change from where it started, isn't it? And um, the more I run it, it seems like the better it gets. It's like breaking in yet again. It's picked up quite a bit of compression. But I guess when you really get right down to it, it doesn't need this top end. It's running pretty good just the way it is. A person with a saw like that could cut a lot of firewood. And that's pretty much what it's designed for. You know, a rancher or firewood type saw. Power-wise, it's in the same class as like a Husky 45. Design-wise, it's got a lot of the similar characteristics being a clamshell and things like that. And right now, stock is 47 millimeter bore. When we put this different cylinder on, it's going to be a 49 millimeter bore, same as a MS390, getting up into the 60cc class. And then with a little increase in compression, it should run a little bit better. We'll probably do a muffler mod as well. It seems like it's pretty choked up. But, hey, you know, action speaks louder than words. This saw has performed quite well, especially considering how it started. You know, you got to give credit where credit's due. That's obviously a well-thought-out saw, and as goofy as design is to me, because I'm working mostly on Husqvarna's, it obviously works quite well. Can't argue with success, and that's been a very successful series. And based on how it's performed, um, starting in the condition it was, that's a testament to the quality of the materials. You know, crank, bearings, piston, top end, all that survived that abuse. So, it's earned my respect, that's for sure. I'm kind of curious to see what happens when I put this aftermarket stuff on there. On the one hand, I'm kind of in the mindset of just leave it alone, let it run. Of course, the other is because it is a channel and we try to do things interesting you know putting this big board kit on there with a pop-up it's going to scratch somebody's interest you know what I'm saying so I'm torn I think I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, put on that top end but it really doesn't need it I'm telling you right now it really doesn't it runs fine what it needs is me to spend a little time with a screwdriver and get a final tune on it run the damn thing. That's what it really needs. It needs a sharpened chain too. So, good saw. Good series. You know, they're popular for a reason. And uh, this one right here is demonstrating why. And like I said, while it's not a powerhouse, it's obviously a fairly solid and fairly rugged design. So, I think I'm going to close off this video and, and get ready for tomorrow.